Hey guys, it's Garth, how's it going? And welcome to another Reaper tutorial. Today we're going to have a really quick look at recording directly into Reaper. So we've already looked at adding a piece of media to a track. Let's say we wanted to record directly into a project. Unsaved project, no track. I'm currently in a blank unsaved project. I'm just going to hit Command T to create a track. Track name, edit text, blank. And let's just call it audio. A U I O, unsaved project, Reaper. Okay. One audio, zero items. There we go. Now I'll just make sure I'm at the beginning of the track with command home. Bar one zero percent. So firstly, when we're recording into Reaper, like in many doors, you need to arm the track that you want to record on. You can go through and arm multiple tracks or not, as the case may be. We've only got the one track here at this point. Uh, so I'm going to hit the F7. Arm. And this is a toggle. Unarmed. Arm. So it will arm the track that you're currently on. One audio arm, zero items. And you can hear there, one armed audio, zero items. Asara reports the fact that this track is armed. It's ready to be recorded on. We'll be recording at this point with our default settings for the hardware. In preferences under device, we've picked the interface that we want to be using. And by default, Reaper will record a mono signal from channel one of your device. You can, of course, though, change the default input from your interface through preferences. Reaper preferences, window, table, row 8 of 37. MIDI devices, device, audio, media item, track slash send defaults. Track slash send defaults. That's where you want to go to set the default channel from your audio device. Now you need to skip through a few of these, so. Uh, 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 default linear, pop up, uh, default auto trim slash red, check, default track height medium, check, check main, defaults for track slash, uncheck free item, uncheck record arm, record config, input one button, record config, uncheck record arm, record config. Record config, this is the one we're looking for. Input one button. Input one button. So this is a pop-up. Menu. That sets the default mode that you're going to be recording in when you create a new track. Press input one button. The settings below will be applied to new tracks, dimmed. Okay, and it tells you there, the settings below will be applied to new tracks. Monitor input. Monitor input, tape auto style. Monitor track media when recording. Preserve PDC delayed monitor, check mark, rec record, check mark, record, input, audio or MIDI. Record, okay. MIDI overdub slash replace, submenu, record, output, submenu, record, input, force format, sub, record, disable, input, mo check mark, input, mono, submenu. Now here we are, input, mono, submenu, and I'm going to go into here. Input, mono, submenu, check mark, input one. Mine's currently set to input one. Input two. And I have an input two available. I'm just using a Scarlet 2i4, so it only has the two inputs that it can choose from. So the options that you will see in these menus will depend on the particular audio interface that you have hooked up. Check mark input one. I have an input one input two. and an input two. So it's a mono on input one is my default. Check mark input menu check mark input okay. mono submenu. Back into here though. Input stereo submenu. There's also a stereo option. Input stereo submenu input one slash input two. And input one input two. So depending on the particular interface you have, you'll see the options here. And these are the default settings that are applied to new tracks. I'm going to leave mine as it is. I'm just going to hit cancel to jump out of here. Input one button. Unsaved project. Reaper V. Okay. And as mentioned, I'm on input one. One audio arm, zero, one audio arm, zero items. So we've used F7. Unarmed. Arm. To arm our track. And F8 is to toggle between three states of monitoring. Not when playing. So not when playing. So it's still monitoring the track, but not when playing. Record monitor off. Record monitor off. Normal. And normal monitoring. So the record monitoring, of course, that lets you hear what you're recording live to disk. So we've got a track, we've armed it, we know which input we're on. So to start recording, we hit the letter R. And we are now recording. It's not actually giving me any feedback that I'm recording, and that's fine. So if you wanted to get a little bit of uh, feedback that you had started recording, under your Asara preferences, remember there's the transport state there, and if you enable that there, when you hit the letter R, it will tell you that you've started recording. So I've been recording along here. I'm just going to hit the space bar. Select files to save or delete. Files recorded. Prompt to save slash delete slash rename. I'll just pause the speech there. So that brings up a dialog that lets us select the files that we want to save or keep. Table. In table, row one of one. Zero one audio one seven zero five one five underline two one zero three dot F lock. Select. Okay. Jump out of there. Prompt to save slash delete slash rename new files. Checked on stop. Now I have this to prompt me whether or not I want to save whenever I stop. There's a few preferences in this dialog that it brings up. Unchecked on punch out slash play. Save all default button. 
and we have a save all default button. There's only the one track there. I'm not going to go through all these dialogues. Basically, we want to save this recording. I'm going to click on this one. Press it. Unsaved project. Reaper V5.40. 101-audio-1705152-2103.flock. Dash dash okay. So that is a recording there. And I've selected that item. And we are now recording. It's not actually giving me any feedback that I'm recording. And that's fine. And your recording is as simple as that. Now, I do want to cover one or two other quick things. We're going to make a second track here. Command T again. Two zero items. Track name. Edit text. Blank. And I'm not going to call this one anything. Unsaved project. Two zero items. One audio armed. One. We have one armed audio. Two zero items. And two zero items. We're at the beginning of the track. Now that's all very well. We've got our default setting for a new track. At the moment, the second track that we've got here is also set to record from input one of my interface. Let's say I want to change that to input two. So I don't need to go into the actual settings and change the preferences for new tracks. We can do that directly from the Reaper interface. So I'm actually going to just use VoiceOver to navigate this UI. Save project, but pro un re en Let's enable our enable grouping here. button. Enable ripple editing button. Move envelope points with media. Show arrange view grid button. Enable snapping button. Enable locking button. Record arm disable button. Track name, audio, text. So what we're looking for is where it has track one and track two. 0.00D I slash O button. Center. Panth. New track button. Solo track button. Effects button. Effects bypass. Invert track phase slash envelopes and automate record mode button. Record monitor button. Track input effects button. Record input. Input one text. In fact, record input input one. That's actually the one we want to look at. Track number. One text. This is track number one though. We want track number two. I'm just going to VO down arrow from here. Folder button. Track number two text. Track number two and back to the left of there. Record input. Input one text. Input input one. Okay. So record input. So each of our tracks will have a record input button. Okay. And it's just to the left of where. Track number two text. It reports the track number. Record input, input one text. So I'm back on the record input button that is referencing track two. Menu. Click on that with voiceover spacebar. Checkmark input, mono, submenu. Input, mono, submenu, checkmark, input one, input two. And here I can change that to input two. Menu checkmark. Or input, stereo, submenu. Go down to stereo. Input, stereo, submenu, input one slash input two. And change it to input one, input two. So irrespective of what you have your default track setting, you can come in here and change what particular input from your interface you want to record from. Record input, input one text. So the record input, input one, indicates that you've selected input one from your device. If I'd picked input two, it would say record input, input two, or record input, input one slash two. So you can go through um, multiple tracks, have each individual track pulling from a separate input from your audio device and record multiple tracks all at the same time. Now, at this stage, I'm just going to leave it on import one. Track number two text. Now, if you've got a whole heap of tracks in your project, that could be a little bit tricky to find. One option to change the input is to use Ray Console. Now, I'm not going to cover the use of Ray Console in this tutorial, but I will leave a link in the show notes so that you can investigate that one yourself. Now, to illustrate another quick way of finding it, I'm just going to create a couple of extra tracks. Track name. Track name. Dim text. Okay, so we've now got... Three zero items. Four zero items. Four tracks Three zero, two zero, one audio armed, one item. Okay. I'm going to use the item chooser. Item chooser menu 167 items. And I'm going to type in record. One, 32, 20, 20, record, record, button. 25 items record button, 10 items record arm disable button, 4 items record input, input 1 text. I've typed in record space IN, that's as far as I got, and I've now got 4 items. We've got a list of record input buttons here, the 4 record input buttons that relate to our 4 tracks. Record input, input 1 text, record input, input 1 text, record input, input 1 text. I've just arrowed down through to the, from the first one through to the fourth one. Record input, input one And text. back up to the top one, you can hear the voiceover reports that sound. So I'll just go up. Record input, so input back one text. on the bottom one. So I should be on the bottom record input button. Record input, input one text. I've hit enter to accept that location. And if I just VO right arrow from here. Track number four text. And yes, indeed, I am on the correct record input button. Record input. So... That's another way, if you have got a lot of tracks in your project, that you can quickly find the correct record input button. Use your item chooser and the record input buttons will come up in order. And you'll just have to count yourself as you arrow down through those record input buttons. 
Now on Windows to change your input, you can also use Ray Console, but there's another way as well. If you just use the standard up and down arrows to move between your tracks, two zero items, three zero items, four zero items, then use your applications key in window, you'll get a pop-up menu that allows you also there to select the input. So it's a little bit easier on Windows, but completely doable on the Mac as well. So really quickly in review, we use F7 Arm. to arm the track that we want to record on. Track, toggle record arming for current, last touched track. We can use F8 Normal, not when playing, record monitor off to toggle between the three different states of recording monitoring. Track, cycle track record monitor. To change the input from which you want to record, you look for the record input button beside the track number of the relevant track. And of course on Windows, just arrow to the track and hit the applications key and look for it in the menu there. We use the letter R to start recording and spacebar to stop. Transport record. Transport, play stop. And as I said, guys, we've got to keep this one pretty short. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for listening and bye for now. <laughs>